Hey, what's happening, guys? What you see here today is a free-running, a stable oscillator built off of a 555 timer. And the camera isn't really giving you a good idea of the flicker rate. It's around 25 hertz. And what I'm going to show you today is how to put this all together and do this and choose any frequency you want for your blinking lights. All right, let's start with our breadboard setup. If you're new to this, I generally always want to put the red line, which is what I'll use for VCC, closest to the pins on the top side of the board. And then the blue line, which is what we use for ground, closest to the pins on the bottom side. Then I just put in a couple of male header pins to uh, bring the power in for my power supply. And then I just like to connect the two sides of the board together. So blue to blue and red to red. That way we have VCC and ground on both of these strips. Now, let's talk about our, five, our friend here, the 555 timer. I know it's hard to read there, but if you look... There is some writing on there, but what's important is that notch there. If you're facing that notch to the left, then this is pin one and this is pin eight. And the pins go like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They go counterclockwise or anti-clockwise for those of you who are not in the U.S. Now, let's talk about what each of the pins do. Pin number one is ground. Pretty self-explanatory, right? We need a ground reference, a zero reference for everything to work off of. So we'll plug this in here. Just like that, little jumper goes from pin one to ground. Let's finish up. I always like to do my power wiring first. So in this case, then we're going to do pin eight is VCC. And this pin will work, or this pin, this chip will work up to 18 volts VCC. I generally don't run it that, that high. It gets very hot at that method. So there's our power. VCC comes in the pin 8 ground to pin 1. Now, next up, we have pin 4 over here. Pin 4 is your reset pin. If it is negative, if it is low... If it is grounded, the chip is not going to work. This can come in use, useful for some functions, but for what we're doing today, it is not necessary. So pin 1 is connected directly to VCC. That holds it in the ready-to-operate state. And that takes care of basically all of our power stuff. Next, we're going to come over here to pin 5, this pin right here, which is our CV, our constant voltage pin. And uh, what that does is it controls comparator thresholds. It outputs uh, two-thirds VCC, and it allows bypass capacitor connection. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to put a bypass capacitor between pin 5 and ground. In this case, it's 100 nano. Anything, you know small little capacitor like that will work just fine for bypass so that is the setup for our power and our bypass everything else here we're going to use so let me bring this down here we're going to sit it down move things out of the way so i can actually get to them and we're going to start by setting up our voltage divider for that we're going to use a couple of uh 10k resistors and like I said it's a voltage divider so it goes from VCC to ground but we're not going to do it just quite like that we're gonna we're gonna plug her in like this so you see we're not going to ground yet but we are going to go to ground and we're gonna go to ground through this 2.2 
microfarad capacitor. All right. So this is what controls our timing. We have our, our input uh, charge and our output charge, you could call it discharge charge. And then we have our capacitor down here for timing. So how do we determine the timing? With this formula right here, the frequency is equal to this constant, 1.44, over RA plus 2RB times C. This is RA, this is RB, and this is C. In our case, we have 10K, 10K, and 2.2 microfarads. You can work out the math yourself. All right, let's talk about how to connect this up. So the first thing we need to do is we need to bring in the voltage from our voltage divider right here between those two resistors comes to pin number seven. And pin number seven is our discharge pin. It is an open collector output to the discharge timing capacitor. So as you can see here, when it discharges, it is going to discharge through this wire over here, down through this resistor, which is limiting the, the charging time on this capacitor. All right. Are you all with me so far? Now, next to pin seven is pin number six. And pin number six is our threshold. It is the end of the timing input. So if the threshold is greater uh, than pin number five, then it sets the output and discharge to low. All that really means is if we want this thing to oscillate freely on its own, then we need to connect pin six, which is our, dis uh, our threshold, yeah, to pin number two, which is our trigger down here. So we just connect pin two to pin six. Pin two again is our trigger. It is, pardon me, I had to sneeze. It is the beginning of the timing cycle. And if the trigger is less than half, or is it a third, a third I believe, yeah, of pin five, it sets it high. So we've connected the beginning of the timing cycle to the end of the timing cycle so that we have a loop. Now there's one other thing we need to make a connection here and that is our trigger needs to go somewhere. Our trigger needs to go into this voltage divider down here. I mean it's all part of the same voltage divider but it needs to go down here between the resistor and the capacitor to ground. So that leaves us with pin number three, and that is our output. And it is able to sync or source current, depending on how you set it up. So if we go like so, just taking a jumper from pin three over here so I have some room to work, and I will put the anode of a capacitor there, and then the cathode will go through a current limiting resistor to ground, like so. And that is our complete circuit. And if I hooked it up correctly, we should get the magic blinkies. So there you can see the flickering that is probably about 25 hertz. Let's find out. We will bring in a meter. It has a frequency counter. And try not to short this out as I connect it.
Whoops. Got to get in the right one. It's not 150 kilohertz. You wouldn't be able to see 150 kilohertz blinking. So, I don't know. It's not reading correctly for some reason, but I'm going to show you how we can change the things here. So, you see how fast that is blinking. Let's uh, power it off. And we're going to take out our 2.2 microfarad capacitor. And we'll put in something... Uh, here's 220 microfarad. So it's like an order of magnitude greater, right? So let's power it up. Mm -hmm. It's on. It doesn't look like it's blinking. It is not. Now it's off. Now watch it ramp up. Boom. Beautiful, isn't it? Let's swap it out for a 100 microfarad. So it should be about half that. So it should blink probably twice as fast. Yeah, you can definitely see it in the ramp up. Here's a 4.7 microfarad. This should give us a bit more um, of an eye-catching ability, because this will slow down the rate so that it's more visible to the eye. There we go. So now you've got a pretty good understanding of the different aspects of the 555 timer. Let me show you a couple things. I'm gonna pull out the reset line. And as you see, it's still working fine, and it generally will. But if I ground the reset line, you see we have nothing. So you pretty much always want it to be held high unless you know you specifically need to ground it. Now, if you pull out this capacitor, it's still working. We can put it on an oscilloscope and show you. But the idea is just to understand that there's capacitance within all the little metal rails in the breadboard. And they are providing capacitance and allowing this to work. So what happens if you change the value of the resistors? Well, if you change the value of the resistors, you are changing basically how fast your capacitor charges and discharges. And that, again, is covered in that formula right there. Frequency equals 1.44 over RA plus 2RB times C. Now, one thing you do need to keep in mind is with equal resistors, you know, these are both 10K, you're not going to get a 50% mark space ratio. It is going to be skewed somewhat, probably about two thirds to one third. And uh, the way we can figure out the time high and the time low are with a couple of other simple formulas. Let me show you those. All right, so our time high, when the light is on, you can be found by multiplying 0.693 constant times RA plus RB times C which looks a lot like that. And to find our time low, come on, get in there. Focus, there you go. Time low is 693.693 times RB times C. So you can see our low time only involves this resistor and this capacitor, but our high time involves everything. It's kind of unique how that works. You can also throw some diodes in here to change some things around, but this is the most basic form, and you need to master this to be able to use the 555 in any sort of circuit that you could dream up. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, please check out my Patreon. If you're not yet a patron, please consider joining. Um, currently, it is the only thing supporting this channel. And, yeah, check it out if you're interested. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you today. Peace. I'm out.